Hi guys, you have three different bikes ABC, all of them start at leverage ratio of 3 and they all of them finish at 2. Which bike is the more progressive? That was the question that I dropped on my social media pages and it created a lot of confusion. So stay tuned to get the answer. Meanwhile, for those who don't know, I am now providing bike services on my website. So if you want me to analyze your bike, just drop me a comment on the website. Going back to our question, which bike is the more progressive? Some of you answered the bike A. Some of you answered the bike C. Some of you answered that the three bikes are equally progressive and a few of you answer that none of those are progressive. So as you can see there is a pretty big confusion around this question. So first thing first, all of them, all of these three bikes are progressive bikes and if you are not familiar with the leverage ratio concept please go to the description of this video and watch the previous videos in the links there. So as I said, the three bikes are progressive because in all of them the leverage ratio decreases, okay? So in a bike that decreases the leverage ratio across the travel, it means that it becomes harder and harder to compress the shock along the travel, okay? Because the lever is getting smaller and smaller. So, all of them are progressive. Which one is the more progressive? We are going to find out. For those who answered that the three bikes are equally progressive, I understand your way of thinking. In fact, the bike industry overall, in general, uh, the way that they use to calculate the progression is basically they they, they make a ratio between the final leverage ratio, 2 in this case, and the initial leverage ratio, 3. And they make a ratio between these two numbers and they give you the value of progression. So they say it has 33% of leverage ratio progression or leverage ratio variation. And, and this school of thinking is widely implemented in the whole mountain bike industry and if you go to some manufacturers websites or uh, online magazines websites you will always see when they talk about leverage ratio progression they just make a ratio between the final leverage ratio and the initial leverage ratio which is technically not incorrect if we are talking about a simple variation on the leverage ratio however as we are going to find out in this video, the progression of the bike is more than just the variation of the leverage ratio. In fact, the shape of the curve, okay, the way that the leverage ratio changes across the travel, has also a very important role in the overall progression of the bike. So for those who answer that all three bikes are equally progressive, I understand your thinking, but there is one bike that is more progressive than the other ones. And the more progressive bike is... Bike A. So congratulations for those who answer it correctly. And why is bike A the more progressive one? To answer this, I am going to plot a graph, a force versus displacement graph, which represents the force that you need to make on the wheel, to compress the wheel, in order to compress the suspension. So are you ready to see the comparison between the three different hypothetical bikes? So one, two, three. Here you get the superimposed curves A, B, C. Just some important details. All of them have exactly the same sag. So as you can see, the three curves intercept exactly in this sag point at 30% of wheel travel. 
So the curves are adjusted to get the same sag. And by doing this, you are comparing bananas with bananas and not apples with bananas. Also, by simplicity, these three curves were simulated with a coil shock, which by definition is not progressive, okay? It's a linear shock, so uh, it's not a confounding factor to this analysis. Okay, so these three curves here are just the effect of the leverage ratio variation, okay? A, B, and C. And as you can see, the bike A ramp ramps up more at the end of the travel, so overall the bike A is more progressive. So now we are going to make uh, a smart trick, which is basically crossing a line between zero and the sack point, a straight line. And this is what you get. So this straight line here represents any linear bike, for instance a single pivot bike like the orange bikes or other type of bikes, any linear bike will always behave like this with a coil shock and keeping the sag the same between all the four bikes, okay? Just to remember you, a linear bike is a bike that has a constant leverage ratio, okay? A straight line in the leverage ratio. The leverage ratio remains the same across all the travel. And that creates this type of straight line in the force versus the displacement curve. So now, how do you calculate the progressivity according to my method? It's simple. You make this straight line crossing the sack point, the linear bike, and now you compare the bottom out forces between the linear bike and the bike you are actually uh, analyzing. So in case of bike A, it has 47% of progression, which means that bike A will always need almost more 50% of force to bottom out comparing to any linear bike, okay? And of course, assuming uh, the same shock and assuming uh, the same seg, okay? Bananas with bananas, we are comparing the same thing. Okay, so bike B has 34% of progressivity, which means that it needs more 34% of force to bottom out when comparing to any linear bike equipped with the same shock and the same seg. And bike C has 19% of progressivity, according to my calculation method. By definition, the linear bike has 0% of progressivity, because linear bike is not progressive, it's fully linear. Okay, so to sum up, when you see uh, in others' websites uh, someone talking about leverage ratio progression or leverage ratio variation, they most likely are talking just about the ratios, the variation between the final leverage ratio and the initial leverage ratio. A simple ratio, simple division between these two numbers. But as I showed you in this video, the progression, the overall progressivity of the bike is not only the leverage ratio variation, but it is also the way that the leverage ratio changes across the travel. Okay, so all of them have 33% of leverage ratio variation, but when we talk about the overall progressivity according to my method, okay, that represents better uh, the exact feeling that you get on top of your bike, when we talk about the progressivity, you can see that they are completely different, okay? The bike A will feel more progressive than, for instance, the bike C. Okay, so to sum up this concept, of course, that the variation is important, but the final slope of the leverage ratio curve is also very important to determine the ramp up in the travel and the overall progressivity feeling of your bike. So when you see my tables of progression in my previous videos, uh, or for instance, when you request me uh, analysis on, on my website, uh, the values of progressivity that I give you is the values uh, according to my method, which, which takes in consideration not only the variation of the leverage ratio, but also the shape of the curve, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want me to analyze and calculate the progressivity of your bike and the anti squats and so on, please visit my website and send me a request.
So guys, it was a pleasure like always. And see you next time. Bye.